Welcome home, dear. I know I'm not supposed to be here, but don't be afraid. <laughs> I might have fangs, but I don't bite much. I would introduce myself and give you my name, but, well, I don't exactly have one. We tend and tend not to have them because we Lamias are quite solitary creatures. We can identify each other with smell if need be. That's a solitary life for you. We're usually, uh, usually abandoned soon after our birth. Actually, except for cotton mouth Lamias, that is. Hmm. But I'm not a cottonmouth Lamia. I have a rattle after all. <laughs> Notice it. It would be nice, though. Being a cotton cottonmouth Lamia. So I could actually be cared for when I was just a young little drake. That's what I like about you, actually. You take care of your young. You humans, I mean. Well, I do love you in particular. That's why I'm here, after all. <clears throat> and it really is oh so nice here. Mm-hmm. Ever so nice here. It's so warm, even though it's so cold outside. I don't know how you humans keep your house so warm. That really goes to show how amazing you humans are. I'm cold-blooded, you see. So this is a really, really big issue for me. I haven't felt this warm in forever. It really is so lovely here. This place is almost as lovely as your company. Oh, but there's no need for you to introduce yourself to me, dear. I already know all there is about you. Of course, I've actually been watching you for a while. I'm not the most informed on human culture, you see. But I could understand how that sort of thing could be unsettling, creepy even. Well, I can assure you... I didn't mean any harm by it. It's just, well, you're the only human out here. Out here in the woods, and... And you know, you just... You reminded me of myself a little. Uh, well, you're out here all alone. Mm-hmm. I saw a lot of myself in you. And it made me want to see you more. And so I did. I watched you and watched you and watched you. And the more I saw, the more I liked you. <laughs> Which I didn't think was possible. But when I saw you sitting by the lake, gazing out at it all alone for some reason, it just made me love you all the more. <laughs> mm, or when I watched you. Hmm, what was the other time? Ah, yes. Walking through the woods, taking pictures. It's made me, well... First of all, it, it made me want a camera myself. Because I would love to take pictures of you. But it also made me love you more. All the times I watched you, no matter what it was, you were doing, it made me think. I want to be with you. It made me think, I want to be your mate. So, what do you say? That's why I decided to slither on over here. Actually, instead of, well, you know, watching you from behind the bushes or something like that. I, I really wanted to respect you, I, I really did. I wanted to give you distance. And not to uh, force my way into your place while you were sleeping or something. But I just love you very, very much. And I can't stay away from you. I tried holding myself back and burrowing myself into my burrow. Just staying in there. 
away from you, safely far away, enough that I wouldn't bother you, but there's not much to do to busy myself in there, not much to think of either, and when I'm in there all alone, all I can think of is you, and and how warm you must feel. I'm sure if I wrapped my tail around you right now, you'd be just the warmest thing ever. I, I shouldn't. I, I really shouldn't. And I won't. At least I think I won't. Not without your permission, anyway. <laughs> but it's very, very tempting, mind you. When you're so lovely and warm, after all. It gets especially cold in my burrow. When... When it rains, you know. And while looking at your shelter here, this this place is very warm. Oh, I would love to stay here with you as your mate. Then on rainy days, oh, on rainy days we could stay inside. And if you were comfortable with it, I could ever so gently wrap my tail around you. I would keep you warm and you would keep me warm. Doesn't that sound just wonderful? And getting some lovely lamia cuddles. <laughs> my tail's wagging just thinking about it. Do you like the sound of my rattle? Its main use is to warn off predators, you see. Not that I can't hold my own, of course. Nothing else in these woods can threaten me. Nothing can go against me, either. Not not coyotes, not bears, not wolves. Speaking of wolves, though, that actually reminds me of something. See, there's something that caused me to face my fears and finally come talk to you. <sighs> See, this, this other day, I saw a wolf girl going into your house. Naturally, I tried to chase her, but... Well, she was too fast and ran away. It's a good thing you weren't home. I don't even want to think what would have happened if you were there while she was... I don't know what she was doing in your house, looking for something, maybe? I don't know. Uh, who knows what would have happened if you were there? It may be, it, it, it made me even more conscious that I need to protect you. I need to protect you, dear. You're the most precious thing I have ever had. So there's no way I can leave you in danger. I don't know if you're willing to become my mate right away. You did just meet me right now, after all. Well, I still need to keep you safe, dear. And to do that, I need to stay with you at all times. I, I would like to live with you as your own personal bodyguard, even. I will be the best protector you've ever had. I have a great sense of smell, you know. I can smell any annoying wolf, wolf girls from a mile away, so they won't be sneaking up on us. All I have to do is flick my tongue a few times, and that's that. <laughs> Simple and easy. I'm also incredibly good in a fight. You wouldn't believe how good I am. I can wipe the floor with anything here. And of course, outside of these woods. Do you see these fangs? They're highly venomous, dearie. Mm-hmm. Even more venomous than anything else you've ever seen before. Just a single bite of these has enough venom. Enough venom to kill... One hundred adult humans. Mm -hmm. Not not that I would kill humans. Unless you wanted me to, of course. <laughs> and you see this tail of mine? I can squeeze something well. With the strength that's more than the strength of thirteen adult bears. Mm-hmm. Not even alligators can bite through this tail. Do you have any idea how strong that this tail has to be to do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really strong. 
Nothing I can constrict can break out of my hold. Uh, well, maybe constrict isn't the right word here. Uh, well, you see, as a snake, I can squeeze something very aggressively. It's not to asphyxiate, possibly, maybe, who knows. It's to crush their bones. <laughs> oh, yes, crushing their bones. They can't crush bones, not like me. Oh, but don't worry, my love. I'd never crush your bones. I promise to be super gentle and super mindful of you. I, I have to keep you safe, after all. I have to ward off predators from you. Mm-hmm. So, I think it would be in your best, um, well, in your, in your best, you know what I mean. It would, it'd be a good idea to accept me. That's what I'm trying to say. If not as your mate, then at least as your bodyguard. Come on. For now, at least. <clears throat> Hmm? You know, it'll be very convenient having me around. I'm extremely well-maintenanced. I'm cold-blooded, so I don't, really, I don't really need much. I'm not a big eater. I can survive just off of ten big meals a year. Obviously, I could even hunt for you. How do you like your mice? Alive? Ooh, me too. They taste so much better that way. Oh, wait. You mean alive is not eaten? As in you don't eat them? That's, um, that's okay. I can see if I can get you something else, dear. Like I said, I'm not really the, the most well-informed of human culture. But that's okay, because I'm willing to learn. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to learn anything for you, sweetie. I can learn to be more human-like if you want me to. I don't really know where to begin. Um, I'll, I'll learn, though. I'll learn. Oh, your sense of sm smell isn't good enough to identify anything? Hmm. So then you could give me a name? Would that make you happy? Would that make you more open to the idea of me being your mate? Say, that wolf girl, she's not your mate, right? I smell her a little on you. I was hoping your sense just got mixed up because of maybe a little scuffle or something. But I really hope it's not because you two are mates. Because that wolf girl, she's not good for you! Wolf girls in general aren't good for you. First of all, you know they're pack animals. They're not even strong enough to fight on their own. <laughs> they just depend on others. Do you really think a mate like that is going to be any good for you? I, on the other hand, have spent my entire life alone, hunting and fending for myself. I have always done it by myself. I am more than enough to protect you. A human as precious as you needs to be protected by someone strong, dependable, and resourceful like me. I mean, wolf girls, they don't even have enough bite force. What are they going to do with that? And I already told you I'm way stronger, right? They have no right to be near you. And even strength aside, think about how annoying it would be with all their fur everywhere. <sighs> They're warm-blooded, after all. Oh, not that I have anything against them. Uh, I, I don't have anything against warm-blooded creatures, I mean. Because you're so wonderful and lovely. But I mean, it, it just means they need more food. They'll be such a burden to you. And think about how annoying their shedding is. 
They'll get little patches of their fur everywhere. All the time. It'll be so annoying for you to clean up every single time. Not like me. I shed my skin all at once. It's super easy to just let it slip off. Wow. You look really horrified here I shed my skin. But that's okay. I'll take care of all that. You don't have to worry about it. I'll take care of it. Because I'm the better mate for you. Because I'm the only one for you. The only one that should stay with you. You want me to stay with you, right? What do you say? <laughs> what do you say, dear? Mm-hmm. <laughs>